for 2J3, the visual equivalents. So those are delivery lines of the club head. The delivery path of the hands, though, is really the ones that, 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 that take precedence. Uh, you can act specifically direct your thrust toward a specific point on the plane line. Tracing, you're also on plane, uh, but when you actually, when you direct thrust, you're also at the same time tracing. So I personally alternate between the two. Sometimes I'll think in terms of, in practice, a straight line thrust. On the other hand, I also make sure I'm tracing and get that helps me get my forearm all the way through. Uh, and I go from one to the other from time to time. Just make sure I got both. But the one that really longer term has the precedence is that straight line thrust to both arms straight from, from the top. Now how do you get that? Right forearm wedge. So, right forearm's on plane, upper arm's not on plane. Left arm flying wedge, the plane of the left wrist cock. So, left arm clearly is not on plane. That's why any stretch, any stretch has to be, of the extensor action is below plane. The plane of the left wrist cock, is a vertical plane of motion. Even if it's on an incline, that's a hammer-like motion. So you mess this one up by bending out of the plane or by arching out of the plane. And wherever you are, you've got this motion. Out, out here, in startup, out, out in here, downstroke, here, impact. You're always, always in this vertical plane of motion. Can you see that? Right. Right there. Now this one here, you mess this one up, not by bending and arching, so, but, but by cocking and uncocking. The same thing that was proper for this one is improper for this one. There. And as soon as you put that under the heel of the hand or even start to think of there being a wedge under here, you hadn't got it. <laughs> or if you started off here and then cocked that wrist, you, you've destroyed your right forearm flying wedge. Which is, doesn't say that you can't uh, re reconnect, but that's not the preferred way. Just keep it. Impact. Top. Finish. So here's your right forearm wedge. They come together at 90 degrees. So, 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 so. Now, back to the branch. Okay, we established it. We got a right forearm wedge. There's our impact alignment with our forward leaning club shaft. All right, we're coming in. Look where, though, this right forearm is pointing. It's pointing way out here. There's the ball, the forward leaning the club shaft, but your right forearm is pointing well in front of the ball. Your golf machine swing becomes a return of the whole forearm and right forearm flying wedge the whole baby comes right back into here. So you start off with your left wrist flat level and vertical. The hands go up the plane of the right forearm here. So, here, here. And the path of the hands down the plane is defined by a parallel, or can be defined, it can be different for special purposes, but defined by, if we take this line, and make it parallel to your right forearm's angle, here's your right forearm's angle approach. It's coming back all the way to here. You're not getting here and throwing the club head in. It's the whole thing coming into here. The parallel line looks like that. Let's extend that line. This is the top of your line delivery path. And you wow. come right down the face of the plane. So, so <laughs> wedges. <laughs> you won't see that in golf digest next month. Negative. <laughs> wedge, right forearm wedge. Angle of the right forearm. Angle of approach. Here, here, here. There's your top. Right back to the right forearm angle of approach. All right, let's do it. Let me see you do it. Start, start with your right forearm. Show me your right forearm wedge. Got it? Address the ball.